Well, I really appreciate you tuning in. It means a lot to me. And I'm hoping that what I have to say today will help you out as a survivalist or as a, someone who's in the military or basically just anyone who wants to be able to sustain life or save life. What I'm going to talk about today is a topic that I hardly ever hear anyone discuss. I hardly ever hear it brought up. I have found only one survival guide so far that talks about this topic. And I don't think I've really ever seen it brought up on any kind of survival show on TV. What I'm going to talk to you about today is knowing when it's okay to stop helping someone in a survival situation. Uh, knowing when it's okay to separate someone from your group or manipulate them. And this sounds kind of mean, and I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I try to be a nice guy. I'm, I'm a Bible-believing man. Um, but this is reality here, and you'll see as I go along that I'm not coming at this from an angle of malice. This is all to help preserve life. All right, now uh, I'm going to give you a little story here real quick. I'm going to use stories to help you remember. So when I was in Iraq, long story short, from there during the invasion, I get stuck in a fighting position with a Marine who just decides, I don't want to be there anymore. Okay, he completely quit. He would not do his job. When it was his turn to pull Firewatch, he just kept going to sleep. So then because he was a junior Marine, I could not get rid of him. I could not separate him from the group. So I had to sit there and watch him and make sure he did his job. And now he's burning my calories. And eventually I had to find ways to manipulate him into doing what he was supposed to be doing. Okay. So when you're in a survival situation, and this is something that I've only found that Michael Hawk's Green Beret Survival Manual has, has talked about. When you're in a survival situation, if there's more than one person, or if there's a group there, chances are everyone's going to be a, one of two kinds of uh, people. Your first kind of people you're going to come across are people who are selfless. They're the ones that know or expect that they may have to sacrifice to save the lives of others, or they may have to give up their life for the greater good. The second kind are the people who expect others to sacrifice for them. These are the ones that they would never give up their life if they didn't have to. They would rather see you die than do the right thing. Um, they will consume all your resources and make sure that they stay comfortable while you suffer. If you've ever seen the movie Unbroken, they're part of that story, there's a great example. Uh, the air crew gets shot down. They're all floating around on a raft. And they're out on this raft for a long time. And they only have whatever food was attached to that raft when they hit the water. And what happens when they're all asleep or not paying attention, the one guy who was the most selfish went and ate all the food. And he left the wrappers in there, and then everyone else discovered it when they went to go get something to eat. Okay? Those are the people that you can not help because they are a cancer. And there's two things you can do to cancer, all right? And story time again. One is you can work to eradicate cancer, okay? You want to cut the tumor out as fast as possible, get it away from your body, so that it does not spread, okay? Um, selfish people, the way they work as a cancer is they will, like I said, they'll consume the resources, they will ruin your morale, they will get you caught. If you're trying not to get caught, they will get you killed, okay? The other thing you can do when you have cancer is you can manipulate what's going on. There is a doctor I read about who takes the polio virus or disease, whatever it is. He rewrites part of its genetic code. He puts it inside the cancerous tumor causes the body to wake up and the body then fights off the cancer, it dissolves it, okay? So what you can do is you can manipulate those selfish people into doing the right thing somehow, okay? You gotta get creative. So you either want to separate them from your group and stop helping them or you want to manipulate them into doing what's right. So those are things you need to consider when you're thinking, okay, when is it time for me to stop helping this person? If you've chosen to stop helping someone, you want to get rid of them as fast as possible. And I'm not saying kill somebody, but there are going to be situations where that's where, what you're going to have to do. If you are evading capture and you have somebody who's going to quit on you and, or get you caught, what's going to happen is that that person will give up all the information that you're trying to protect. That person will do whatever it takes to stay comfortable, to stay warm, to stay fed, to stay feeling warm and fuzzy inside. 
they will lie to themselves and tell themselves they're in the wrong or that what they did wasn't a big deal. And they won't care that you are going to suffer or die or, um, you know, end up having nightmares the rest of your life. All right. Um, they will slow the group down. Once they start feeling tired and feeling sorry for themselves, that's when they will do things that ruin everyone else's day, all right? When you are in a survival situation, another very important thing is morale. The selfish people, the people that are a cancer to the survival survive, survivors, would-be survivors, um, they will also kill the morale. You know, imagine you have one chocolate bar and you're like, okay, we gotta go 10 miles today and then hide. When we get to that 10th mile, we're all gonna have a piece of chocolate. The person who is selfish will realize, hey, I'm hungry and there's chocolate. And they won't care that that's everyone else's reward. They will find a way to steal that chocolate without you knowing. Or they will find a way to steal that chocolate and deal with being caught later. And they will eat it and there won't be chocolate for everyone else. So now you've got a bunch of hungry, uh, demoralized people that are in a bad situation. And that just makes the situation even worse because now everyone else is feeling tired, sore, hungry. You know, they may even start feeling sorry for themselves. And once you start feeling sorry for yourself, that sorrow is the fertile field that quitting um, grows abundantly on. All right. So the selfish people are the cancer. All right. They're the ones that destroy everything. If you want to know when it's okay to quit on someone or to cut ties with someone, it is when you can identify that that person is selfish and that they are a threat to the survival of the rest of the group. Sometimes there's a situation and you're going to get put into it and there's no way to completely win. It's just the nature of the situation, okay? Um, so you do the most good that you can. If you have to get rid of somebody, if you have to tell somebody, hey, you're off on your own, or if you have to leave while they're sleeping, or if you have to escape and leave them behind, um, you know, there's ways they can still be found. But sometimes that's the best thing to do. And if you have to do that, please realize that sometimes it's for the greater good. Anyone who knows how to track, uh, you know, can follow footsteps, can follow where the footsteps came from, you know, once they get to a certain distance, they can send out drones or something like that and use heat, heat stuff, thermal vision to retrace your steps back to where that selfish person is being hidden. You know, just because you're giving up on helping them there and now doesn't mean you have to completely give up on them. It just depends on the situation. You know, you can always leave them, come back for them later, you know, when you have help or resources. Um, but... Your big priority when you're, in survival, when you're in a survival situation is getting home alive, maintaining homeostasis, coming back as healthy as possible, and you want to do that for everyone. When you have a group of people, it's important to identify their skill sets and give everyone a job, but in my opinion, even before that happens, if you can determine who is selfish and who is selfless, that is going to make deciding what you have other people do easier. Because sometimes you'll have multiple people with the same skill. So you don't want the selfish people doing much. Because when you have them do stuff, there's ways they can gather intelligence on you. All right, so if you're stranded somewhere, that intelligence may be, hey, that guy has the chocolate bar or extra chocolate or extra water, okay? If you are in a war and you're evading capture or you escaped, that intelligence may be, well, this is that guy's escape route. This is where he's gonna go, this was his objective. They will feed that information to the people you don't want having it. I hope this helps. Uh, I think here I've covered all of my uh, all of my notes. I go, went ahead and made some notes here. Um, you know, I just I just want everyone to be able to make it back home if they're ever in a a situation where their life is on the line. But uh, feel free, as always, to leave a comment on here. Feel free to chime in. This is kind of a taboo slash sensitive topic. I hope I did it some justice. Um, and I do care about you guys who are watching this. I really do hope it helps. Uh, you know, as always, yeah, chime in if you'd like. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you would like to. And uh, Semper Fi and God bless.